Well, this is Barbara. Welcome to Digital Age Expo. Um, over to you. Hello, everybody. Yes, it is such a pleasure to be here. And I am going to present my language program. I am the founder and owner of um, BU Language and Learning Center. I have three masters in German, English, and French. And languages are my passion. I always wanted to learn languages since I was a little girl mainly because my father is from Nigeria and my mom is German, so I always figured if I know French and English, I can speak to everybody from Africa. So I studied it and it really worked. I was able to speak with everybody and that gave me the idea that um, languages just give you a huge opportunity to speak to many people and extend your knowledge because you can learn new languages with new cultures and I thought this is an amazing opportunity. Over the years I've developed several language programs and also language games. For example, a game for German learners because it is hard for them to understand that nouns are written capitalized, especially if they live in, in America for a long time and they are used to very small nouns. But in German, the nouns are big. So I designed a language, a memory game where you have the noun. In this, in this um, case, it's a dolphin. In German, delphine. And it's capitalized and the students, even if they are little, they find the matching piece, but it is not like in um, a normal memory that the matching piece looks the same, but one is the noun and the other is the verb. For example, der Delfin springt. This way they practice, ah, okay, dolphin is capitalized, but the verb is small like in English. Games, I think, make so much fun and you, f you don't feel like you're learning anything, you just feel like you're playing and that is very popular. What else do you do with languages? Like I said, you communicate. Me personally, I grew up in Germany and uh, my father is, like I said, African and um, everything is about communication. You speak to each other, you find a way to speak through your culture, through your language, and it's, it is just amazing. During my time as a foreign language instructor, I had many great international opportunities. I had the opportunity to teach in Oxford. I also had the opportunity to um, study in Paris, France. So I, I always learned the culture with the language, which helped me a lot. And now when I give instruction, I can do that also by simply using all the knowledge that I had because to read about Paris is one thing, but to live in Paris, to drive the metro, to go places is a different opportunity. Um, and it was the same thing for Oxford. When I was teaching in Oxford, I could experience England in a personal way. <clears throat> Since it was close to London, I often took the bus and went to London, for shopping, um, I went to Madame Tussauds, it was all lived culture. And while I was there, being a student of English, I had a vast vocabulary, but I had the problem that it was not so easy to deal with everyday vocabulary. So that was another thing that I put into my system. I was thinking there must be a way to use vocabulary that is really needed. So my classes are always custom made and custom based according to each person's need. I, for example, was standing in Oxford and I needed a broom, but I did not know what a broom was. I knew um, Shakespeare, I could speak about literature, but I had no idea how to ask for everyday things that are so desperately needed. So that was a huge difference and it made things really complicated. So I was like, okay, what is it that you really need when you speak? And then another thing that I love to do is I work with the US Air Force and I teach um, the um, airmen how to speak um, German, my mother tongue on different levels. So according to their level, I teach the language, which also has the opportunity that my students are sometimes in Germany, sometimes all over the world, sometimes in America. And again, I have the opportunity to teach my culture and the language. 
which um, gives so much more understanding and is such a great opportunity, which I dearly love. What else can be said about foreign languages? They can be simply a reason for travel goals, or I work with many expats that simply say, well, I am from Germany and I would simply love to speak to somebody from my own country. Sometimes it's the grandchildren that do not know how to speak German to their grandparents or they don't know how to write to their grandparents and then I give them the opportunity to practice German and the grandparents are so excited when their um, grandchild that lives in America, for example, can write little thank you notes or birthday greetings or now for the holidays, Christmas cards. And that is a great opportunity as well. And it is also a huge part of our culture because as Germans, we do love Christmas dearly. Many people love Christmas, but we celebrate for three, three days. So we start on the 24th of December where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and then we receive gifts in celebration of his birthday. This is always a big thing for my kids living in America because they get the gifts earlier than the American kids who have to wait till the morning when Santa Claus comes overnight and brings the gifts. So they have the gifts on the 24th, they go to bed after playing and then we also have the first day of Christmas and the second day of Christmas which is an amazing opportunity as well because you can um, you can celebrate for three days which is um, practical because you can celebrate on the 24th with your immediate family um, on this first day of Christmas you can celebrate with your family-in-law and on the next day with your own family extended family so every um, parent and grandparent has the chance to see everybody um, school is out, we have like um, a big Christmas um, vacation where we celebrate Christmas and then we keep staying at home because the New Year's is coming up and this is always the most exciting time because you have time to be together and celebrate the holidays. During my time as a foreign language instructor, I have met so many amazing people because everybody comes with a huge story and the stories are absolutely breathtaking. You can do so many things. You can find out so many things. I have one student I have been working with for seven years. She is very diligent and utterly amazing. And right now she is in Austria and she has been working so hard on her German that now when she um, does anything in her company and they need somebody for a German speaking country, she's always the number one, which is another huge opportunity. So in essence, you can learn a language and position yourself in your company higher and find your own niche and be super unique simply because you know the language the other people do not know. So it's a real treasure. I've also had the opportunity to work with um, business people from Africa that basically um, are here maybe from a French speaking country, but they are in America and so they want to better their, their language skills to get higher on the scale for business. This is also an amazing opportunity and it is also a lot of fun. Um, other opportunities are little group classes or simply classes where the, st the students pick the class because they simply say, well, I would love to learn German for whatever reason. And then they um, take private classes. This is all very easy now because we can go online and do everything we like to do easily. We really can literally teach and learn 24 seven. And it's a gift that you have for life. You know, it never goes away. I use it for teenagers because teenagers are in this phase where there is so much uncertainty and um, growing up isn't that easy. So I give them the opportunity to um, learn a language and I call it their superpower. It encourages them, it gives them a new um, knowledge-based power, which is the language and the culture. And it can be totally up to them. It doesn't depend on what class or what language they have to learn in school, they can just choose the one they want for whatever reason. Um, there are so many um, reasons why, like some people might just say, I love German cars and that's why I want to learn German. Or others say, 
I love Paris. It's so romantic. The French language is so romantic. So I go out there and I learn French because that is a great opportunity and you can reward yourself or your child and say, well, if you do this diligently, then we will take a trip and go to Paris, go to the museums and experience so many different things, which is a great goal and also works very well. Languages have always been the most exciting thing to me because even now I, while I'm speaking to you, I do that in English, although I'm German and it is a great opportunity. I mean, I could not speak otherwise, but I can now. And although basically everybody learns English, I think it's very important that you show your passion by offering knowledge in the target language because people still open up more if somebody just makes an effort even if it's just a little bit and they're like well i can um say hello and bye and thank you in a different language like in my case yeah ja, hello vielen dank das ist wunderbar or in french merci beaucoup c'est super you have so many options and um, the languages are spoken not only in the main countries but also other countries and I love that opportunity very much. During the time you grow up with your um, student, especially when they are kids, and you find out more and more angles for the foreign language. I always thought like there's nothing that is more fun. And you always say like, if you enjoy your job, it doesn't even feel like a job. And that's how I feel on a daily basis. It does simply not feel like a job because it is so much fun and it's so enjoyable. So this is also amazing. And right now I literally feel like I'm in England because um, I am here. Um, and um, although I'm in the studio, I'm still right here and I enjoy the English, the British vibe, which is amazing. Um, I can literally smell the fish and chips. I love Indian food. It's my favorite by far. I also think food is a great way to learn culture to find out about different things. So if you would have different lessons, um, I would start with the basics. So what are the basics I want to communicate? So what are the first things we would want to know? Probably we want to introduce ourselves, ask a name, give a name, want to know the age, especially with kids. And later on, we might want to know what the profession is if you're dealing with adults. So it is a logical system that languages are basically based on. So I'm trying to um, give you a little glimpse. So let's say in German, if you want to start talking and you just want to say hello, you would say hallo. Yes. And then you want to know, how are you? Wie geht es dir? Um, and then the other person might say, well, I'm fine. And yourself? Mir geht es wunderbar, mir geht es gut. Und wie geht es Ihnen oder wie geht es dir? Which again leads to another specialty in German that we have the formal way to address people. So when we say Z capitalized, it means it is formal. It is a person that we don't know. It's not family. So we say Z. And the Z is then like a plural form, which is um, very unique to our language as well. Just like capitalizing all the nouns which in essence does make sense also because um, like our name is given to us, other names are given to other objects. So if I have um, a telephone or a cell phone, then the name <coughs> is given to this piece. So it is das Handy and it's also capitalized. I also like to teach through all the holidays during my, um, during my instruction. So I think the holidays that you celebrate are so much part of your culture as well. And in Germany especially, we have the option that we can celebrate very regularly because we always have a lot of little vacations that accompany our um, culture and our holidays. So we have holidays to celebrate fashing where we have like scary masks, like witches to um, scare the winter away and finally get spring back, which is very exciting. Then we continue with another big holiday, which is Easter, 
Then we also celebrate Mother's Day, which is a global thing, but it's also interesting because it's different in different countries. So you can celebrate it multiple times, which I like. So whenever it is Mother's Day, you can celebrate it and um, send greetings to your mom, which is nice. I like this very much. And the same with Father's Day. They are on different days also, depending on the country where you come from. But basically, everybody celebrates it also. We also have many Christian holidays, the biggest being Christmas, of course. Then New Year's is a big party that we celebrate. Um, so we have champagne and snacks. And of course, we wait for the next year for the new year. And that is also an amazing way to celebrate. So I jumped right back to the end. What else do we have in between Easter? Then while Americans have Halloween, we, um, we already celebrated that at the beginning of the year when we try to get rid of the cold winter in our country. So during um, the Halloween time, we don't really have the same holiday, although many um, um, Germans have adapted the culture and celebrate Halloween too. I like to include as many holidays as possible because it is also showing an appreciation for other um, cultures and backgrounds and languages. So we also celebrate Halloween um, in our family because it is part of the culture and we are integrated into it. So while we're still celebrating our holidays, we also celebrate the American holidays. And not long um, ago, we had Diwali, which I thought is a beautiful, um, loving holiday. It is so warm and full of love. Um, and it becomes more known now, I feel. It is celebrated globally. <clears throat> and it is also such a nice, such a positive message, which I enjoy very much. Um, what else do we have? When you are celebrating Thanksgiving, so we are celebrating Thanksgiving as well because it is part of the global holidays, the global family somehow. And we have something similar, which is Ernte Dankfest, where we celebrate that we have had a good harvest and we are enjoying that. So it's again um, about food, although it's from a different angle. And I like that as well, because you can always say like, we celebrate this, what do you celebrate? Can you tell me how you celebrate it? Um, does your family do it the same way? Um, what are the differences? What do you like the most? And you keep building, yes? Back to more um, introduction for the vocabulary, for the real communication. Like if you would speak to somebody, what would you say? Things like, um, Okay, we said hello, we said what the name is. Now we might want to know the age, especially if you're a teenager. So we would ask, how old are you? Wie alt bist du? And then the other person could answer, I am 17, ich bin 17 Jahre oder 17 Jahre alt. What else would we then ask ourselves? What else would be interesting? Maybe hobbies. Teenagers like to talk about hobbies. What hobbies do they have? And um, this is also, I think, very exciting because many teenagers um, have so many things to do, um, but it is also a big variety of options that they do. For example, um, you can say, I play an instrument, ich spiele ein Instrument. Um, then, of course, you want to know what instrument do you play? Well, um, I'm playing the guitar, ich spiele Gitarre. <clears throat> or the violin. So we have a similar word, die Violine oder die Geige. So this is also nice. Um, right here, we also have like the opportunity to horseback ride, which would be in German, reiten. When we say reiten, we mean that we are on a horse. Yeah, Reiten is auch sehr beliebt. As, um, it's a nice opportunity as well. What else could um, teenagers like and adults just the same, maybe reading, yeah? So in German, we would say, ich lese oder ich lese gerne, I like to read. Which leads to another conversation, well, what do you read? What is your favorite author? Ich lese gerne Romane. I like to read novels. Yeah, and then do you have a favorite author? Hast du einen Lieblingsautor? And then we could choose, yes, some have classics, 
classical authors, some have modern authors, and you can talk about that. So when we um, venture into the adult world, we have the opportunity to speak about business a little bit. So business, what could we talk about? Well, um, where are you from probably also, which is super exciting, especially in international countries. I enjoyed that very much in England as well, because it's so very, very international and in America as well. So that is a great question to ask as well once you get to know each other. So for example, where are you from? Wo kommen Sie her? You have the formal Sie again. And you can talk about that. Yeah. For example, um, ich komme aus Deutschland. I am from Germany. And then that's like, oh, that's interesting. Um, what brought you here? Das ist interessant. Wie sind Sie hierher gekommen? Yeah. And in my case, I came as an international exchange so in German, I would say something like, um, ich kam als Austauschlehrerin, ja, nach Amerika. Um, and then I can give more details even. Um, yes, I came to America to teach French and German. Ich kam nach Amerika, um Französisch und Deutsch zu lernen. So you can keep going. What else could you be talking about? Um, what is your favorite dish, for example? Or what is your specialty? I always love to know when people cook what their specialty is. Yes? So, um, we can ask again, was ist dein Lieblingsessen? What's your favorite food? And if you cook, what is your specialty? Was ist deine Spezialität oder was ist ihre Spezialität? Was kochen sie besonders gut? What are you cooking very well? So you can see that there's so much to talk about. And when you can do it in the target language, it is very unique and very exciting. So it opens so many doors and it's so much fun. Um, another thing I like to talk about is travel because traveling is extra amazing, I guess, at this time as things are opening up again and you can travel a lot more. So. I literally designed a whole bucket list of travel locations because I feel like I have to catch up. Like I always like to basically have a suitcase packed and ready to go to travel the world with my family because it's also such a great opportunity for children. They travel, they learn the culture and they design their own curiosity. My children, for example, are bilingual. They speak um, German and English because they are German Americans. But um, when it came to choose languages, now that they are in high school, they picked French, which I thought was nice because it is something else that they can do. They don't necessarily have to take German because they are German, but if they would have, I would have supported that also. But now as they are learning more and more French, they can't wait to um, go back to Europe and have a significant time in Paris where I will be, of course, a tour guide be, uh, besides being the mother because I had the opportunity to study in Paris, France. So this is also like a very nice intrinsic goal. When I teach languages, I think it's very important that, um, that you have an intrinsic approach, an intrinsic goal. Going by my own timeline, like I said, I had like this huge jump in culture when I lived in um, Oxford and when I experienced, like I said initially, how some everyday vocab is so very much needed. And since there was nobody who spoke German, I, it was really um, the perfect way to extend my English um, vocab and get a knowledge of the culture. I also feel that it's very important to know collocations because they are so very specific to the language and to the culture as well. And when I initially studied it in big dictionaries, um, I loved it and I experienced it and I was curious about it. But then being in the country, being in England, it was utterly amazing because I could simply um, go there and see how it is really done, how it is really used. And that was amazing to me. It was um, 
so much more intense than just seeing it in a dictionary to really live it and hear it and respond to it this way and make it your own, you know? And of course, language is um, a living mechanism in a way. So, or organism, you should rather say. And so it keeps changing, 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 which is also interesting that there are words that are created and they are used so much that they really get into the dictionary. So they're always adjusted. So you, you keep learning as the language keeps developing, which always makes me very curious as well. Since I'm also a huge fan of literature, another reason why I always enjoyed languages was that I felt the intensity when you could read a book in the original. That was like very fascinating to me when I was in Paris because I um, read um, Samuel Beckett in French, but the unique thing was that it was really Samuel um, Beckett who wrote the book in French because he was living in Paris as well. And his French was so good that he um, translated his own book from English to French. So um, waiting for Godot, I read in French as on Atador Godot, which was really unique as well, because you had the opportunity to see how exactly the author wanted it translated. So it gives you also the um, chance to have total control over what do you want to say in the different language. And since language is always filled with curiosity, I also do that when I watch movies. Um, I love to um, change the subtitles or look through the subtitles. So I would watch a movie in German with French subtitles. And it just brings me joy because it's so interesting because you venture into those different languages and it gives a different emotion. So um, when I was in England, I really enjoyed the fact that I could have all those original authors. Um, I found a book by Shakespeare, which had all his works there, all his poems, all his plays. And it was giant and written on really, really thin paper. And I thought like, what a giant treasure. And um, that was also so amazing to really read Shakespeare in English and read Moliere in French or Marcel Proust, the way he describes things is utterly unique and very detailed. So um, books are also a great way to extend your vocab and venture into a new world. And if you can do that in the mother tongue, again, it is utterly amazing. Through my, through my own experience, after I was teaching in America for the first time, where I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, I then went back to Germany, um, worked as the foreign language head for French and started missing America. So um, the world somehow changed. So usually you're homesick for your own home. But in my case, I became homesick for the new home. And that was in that case, America. So I came back, but this time I went to Houston. Um, in America as well, but a different um, climate, a different mentality. And um, I always joke around because I feel like Germans love meat and um, Texans do too. So it's like a match made in heaven. I love barbecues. We have a lot of barbecue here and I enjoy that immensely. And you can really connect through your food, you know. Um, they also have things, um, especially in Texas, that is very much influenced by Germany with even German words. We have the Schlitterbahn, which is like um, an adventure ride, so to say. And it's written in German because there are many Germans that settled here many generations ago. And it is always um, fascinating to me as well how you can find pieces of your own culture or rather your heritage in other countries and how it's lived, how it's experienced, that you can find Christmas markets here. And um, it is like a piece of home, um, some favorite dishes that you can get that you might miss over the Christmas holidays, which is also very amazing. And since we don't have a lot of snow here, I also like the opportunity that there is any possible climate in America that you could wish for. So you can just go um, to Colorado, for example, if you miss the snow 
from Germany, uh, which is also really, really amazing. And um, the French experience, maybe a little bit more, when I was um, studying in Paris, I also met some amazing professors that gave such great insight, and one of, it, one of which was a professor who um, taught the idea of functional grammar, which fascinated me totally and still sticks with me today. Um, and it is always part of my um, instruction as well, because to look at grammar as a functional way of expression is utterly unique because you can say so much simply by using the grammar. The grammar that I use really explains why I say something, how I mean something, how likely I think something is, how unlikely it is, whether it will happen, might happen, already has happened. And you can do all that simply through grammar, which is also unique. And um, I think often that is um, underestimated how much you can just simply do through grammar itself when you express yourself in another, in another language. So this is also really, really exciting to me. And um, in my instruction, um, I use many books, starting with kids' books for little kids, which also leads me a little bit to my um, playful approach immersion class that I have designed, which is like for really little kids. And I was thinking, we have all those international people. We also have so many international dolls. So I felt although we have many international dolls on the outside, they don't really speak the language. So I was thinking, well, if you have um, a doll that, for example, um, has French clothing, then it would, be, it would make so much sense to let the doll speak French. So it also helps when students are shy, especially when they are younger, that they can simply speak through the doll, you know? So they learn French with the doll and, and they, they start with the same system. They also want to say, hi, how are you? And things like that. So they say, salut, ça va? Je m'appelle Josephine et toi? My name is Josephine and your name? So the other person can respond. Um, Je m'appelle Stéphanie. And so Stephanie can even be French or German. I also like it when they have international counterparts that speak to each other. Um, and I think that's like this extra level that is super exciting, that you don't only on the outside show the doll, but also on the inside. What could the doll speak? Where could the doll come from? And nowadays, everything is so international that in essence, um, you can't necessarily tell by looking on the outside where a person is, fr is from, which I like a lot too. Like you can just blend in like in America or in England. And um, so I love doing that through the dolls with kids. And um, it is a nice, playful approach. I also like it because I feel sometimes kids don't have the opportunity that much anymore to play hands-on or simply don't do it anymore because we have so many digital devices that are amazing because without digital devices we couldn't do half of the things that we are able to do now but at the same time i like to combine the old and the new coming from europe i always say i come from the old world and i like to mix it with the new world so I might have a tangible doll that comes from France and speaks French, but I have the opportunity to give the instruction globally on my computer, online. I have a whole um, section, a whole studio that is designed for the dolls because they have their own world. They go places, they travel, and again, the, the story dictates the vocab. So it is part of a story which then sticks much better with the learner, which makes sense, yes, for example. Um, it's Thanksgiving and my pen, my PayPal, my, my pen friend, right, um, my friend from France is coming to America and so I'm going to tell her all about Thanksgiving and that is also a very interesting thing to do, right? So. 
we used to have like really old fashioned letters where you would really write a letter to the other person and you would be excited because then the letter would come back from France, for example, with a French stamp and that would be very, very unique, right? And um, now we can do it swiftly with uh, messengers or emails and communicate faster, exchange um, pictures and experiences from holidays, talk about school, how school is different, how school is similar, what you like, what you don't like, which I also see as a super amazing opportunity. And generally, I'm just a very playful person and I like those um, classes very much because they give you the opportunity to just venture into the world of the kids be, um, and be on the same level. And on the other hand, it's also a great opportunity because sometimes um, students learn languages that the parents don't speak, but that the parents want them to learn. And then um, I can use my doll, for example, to speak in the target language and stay in the target langu language, which is very important for me because um, they should be able to not be distracted by their own language because that otherwise gives this hesitation where you come from translating. Like if you think in English and you want to speak French or German, it is so much harder than when you simply stay in the target language. So I base my languages, my instruction, no matter what age level, um, on grammar. I think it's very important that you have a good grammatical foundation and build on it because it gives you the security, whether you are young or older, that you know my structure is correct. And I think that's so important that you have the correct um, structure and now you build on it. For example, when I um, teach younger children, but I also do it with adults, I like to challenge them to be more um, creative with their sentences as they are building up the quality of their sentences or the level of their sentences. It's not even a bad quality necessarily just because it's easy, but we want to make it more exciting. So that to me is very important also. So what is exciting? Um, what do you want to do? Um, at this point also, people can ask questions if they want to. Since I am out here, I cannot really see who is maybe out here, but if there are people that have questions, they are very welcome to speak. There's, there's nobody on the Zoom link, but give it a little while because people that are live streaming might suddenly start appearing. Okay. <laughs> so you can't, you can't see if anybody is out there really, right? <laughs> um, I think we'll be able to tell you what the stats are, um, okay. but I can't tell you at the moment. Okay. Because I'm on this, I'm, I'm listening yeah, to you Yeah, with on me Zoom, on so. this side. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so should I, because um, I had the opportunity to open up for 15 minutes questions. So, um, but there's nobody. So I just keep talking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah? <laughs> absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being my loyal fan who is in the right time zone. <laughs> well, I'm the host. <laughs> yes, exactly. Which is very helpful, right? <laughs> awesome. Yes. So did you already get a glimpse of German and French culture and language talking to me? Yeah. 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 Did you say that you didn't read that Shakespeare book in different languages though, did you? No, I read, no, I read Shakespeare in English, which I thought was so much more exciting than reading a translation in German, you know, because uh, right, you lose yeah. so much. Yes, exactly. I thought like it is so much better. But I, but I thought it was interesting about Samuel Beckett that he translated his own book. Um, yes. yes, and isn't that unique? So he really lived in Paris just like I did and translated it in French. So he made sure that it is the way he wants to translate it. So it was very similar to the English version, basically. Yes, it yeah. was. Yeah. Yes, because you have so much influence when you translate a book. Um, you still give it your own twist, you know, compared yeah. to another person. Since he was the author, I thought that was super amazing. And I literally did that while I was in Paris. So it was kind of really fun, right, to read him in French in Paris where he wrote it. The book, yeah, it was such a nice cultural experience. Yes, but you've read both of you. You've read the English and yes. the French one. Yes, okay. exactly. And it yes, comes across. It comes across as the same. Yes, it really does. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah. and I thought that was so unique. And yet it, it feels totally different somehow, you know, to read it in English, like the initial version, and then to read it in French. I thought that was super unique. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so what, was what language do you dream in? That's an interesting question. I always say that my languages are attached to emotions, like French is my my emotional language, like for example, when I'm in a, like when I want to express emotion, I use French. When I want to express everyday things, I use English. And when I want to talk about official papers and complicated things, my, my go-to language is German, my mother tongue. Right, okay. Yeah, so it, so it is somehow interesting how that is, you know? Yeah, whereas... Um, when I dream, I'm not really sure. I think it depends on where I am. I think if I think about Paris, I dream French. If I think about my great time in England, I think English, so I dream English. And when I'm in Germany, then I dream German. I think that's what it's like. It's the same <laughs> way as when I'm awake. Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. your analogy of English food. Fish yes. and chips and curry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's that's like my my passion. I love it both, you know. You <laughs> <it> both. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, and mango chutney and vinegar on your chips, right? On your fish. Oh, yeah. yeah, this is so good. You need to have it both, <laughs> and lots of um, Earl Grey tea and everything like that, right? Because it's oh, so I'm delicious. Sure about the Earl Grey tea. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I mean, that's the funny thing always, like when I speak to English people, they always talk about having a cup of tea and Americans have a cup of coffee, right? So that's also so, so nice. I'm like, oh yeah, I miss the cup of tea, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so and when the Germans, talk, it's mostly beer and schnapps. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Especially since we like to eat so much, we love to just um, drink a schnapps afterwards, right? Because we have those huge pieces of meat, our traditional schnitzel. So then we need schnapps to even um, digest it all. Yes. <laughs> that is so true. Yes. <laughs> in Texas, surely the, the, meat, the meat must be bigger in Texas. It is, you know, yeah. you think the schnitzel was big, but now I'm in Texas, it's even bigger <laughs> the meat, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> they have amazing steak, you know, we have all, we have lots of amazing beef. So it's really a match made in heaven. You know, a German in Texas gets lots of <laughs> meat and barbecue, which is really nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've um, learned about brisket and I'm so passionate about it because it's so delicious. What, sorry? Brisket. What's brisket? It's, it's like this really, me um, like it's, it's beef and it's usually like, it's, they are very small pieces and it's, it's not dry, but you have to be very good at preparing it. Some make it too dry, some have it fatty, but there's like this specialty where it is not dry and it's not too fat and it's in a in a sauce like a barbecue sauce and it tastes delicious it's brisket okay. not, not ever heard yeah. of that. you okay. need to try it i haven't known about it before i came to america either and that's now one of my favorites you know okay. when i go to a barbecue brisket. place yes okay. brisket yes it's super delicious yes <laughs> <laughs> yes i can't believe it's as early as it is in the morning for you Yes, <laughs> yes. I, I, when I talk about my passion, there is no tiredness. I'm always excited talking about the things that I do, that I've done. Yes, absolutely. You have now almost 11, right, in England? Yes, yeah. Almost 11, right? Yeah. yeah, it is a difference. Yes. I love your background. It's really nice. Yeah. Question everything you do. Yes. <laughs> well, we're a graphic design company. Ah, that explains it. It's really beautiful. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's just unfortunately yeah. the sun's coming in, so I look like a ghost. But um, oh, <laughs> <laughs> see, we do it's... have sun in England as well. <laughs> yes, exactly. For all the people that are saying it's raining all the time, think again, right? <laughs> well, actually, we're on the Isle of Wight. I don't know whether you know the Isle of Wight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where nice. that's where that's where I'm talking. Ah, that's beautiful. This is really nice. And what does your other side say? Think before you print or? Yeah. 
This is unique. Not speak, but print. This is awesome. <laughs> Think before you print. I it's love a bit it. Ironic, it's because we're a graphic design company, but yes. We yeah, try and do as much good. digital stuff as we can. So Yes, this is amazing. So how is the transition? Is it like art to do to do more things digital now, or do you like yeah. to combine it? Well, we combine. We do. We do both. So um, you do but, both. Uh, uh huh. And what but, do you uh, like more? Do you have a preference, or do you like <coughs> to combine it? Um, I don't. I shouldn't really say this out loud, especially as we're <laughs> being recorded. But um, <laughs> there is nothing nicer than seeing a bit of print when yes. when you've done all the work and you're flicking through and you've chosen yes. papers and yes. varnishes and things. Yes. But I, I, no, digital is the way forward. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite scary, actually. I was talking to a guy yesterday, and I can't remember the stats that he was saying, but it was something like one tree. Mm -hmm. uh, it was horrific. It was basically one tree yes. will only create X number of business cards, and there uh -huh. are Y number of business cards being printed constantly. And when you start thinking about things like that, that's very frightening. Yes, it really is, isn't it? And so that's where I appreciate the modern version where you have your QR code, right? And things like that, where you can yeah. really just scan it and be done with it, right? Yeah. Whereas with other things like what I see on your wall, this is just so beautiful. You can't um, do it the same way, right? No. Or like, like <laughs> books, when I speak about books, I talk about real books, printed books, you know, yeah. that I hold in my hand and... I still treasure it, you know, and like, even when you see all the authors, they're holding their real books, right? You can buy my book and yeah. it just feels different. And when I have them on my shelves, which I like in my different languages, they are like old friends, you know, they're yeah. on my shelves and they come with a story. So it is so beautiful. And no, so I, cool. I couldn't read a book digitally. I just couldn't do yes. that. Me no. neither, because no. it's like, it just doesn't feel right, right? No. It, you no. need to have this. Right, you have your cup of tea and you read your book and you turn the pages and then it's on the shelf and it's a friend, you know, yeah. it's part of the family to me. Yeah. This is so amazing. <laughs> That's why I always say I come from the old world. I'm very old fashioned, but I also embrace the modern world because otherwise we couldn't speak right now, which is well, super is amazing, exciting also, you're, right? You're, yeah. you're in Texas and uh, I'm on exactly. the island wide and yes. there's people all around the world able to watch this. Fantastic. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. This is so unique. We're in different time zones and still it is so utterly amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much. Yes. All right, Barbara. Well, it's lovely to meet you. Same here. It was and, uh, really I nice to meet you. Go back to bed, I would imagine, is what you'll be doing. But um... That's the plan, exactly. <laughs> more sleep and then start over again. Yes. But, uh, but uh, have you looked at the show? Have you had a look? Yes, I show? have. Yes, I love it. It is really nice. Yes. And it's so unique that you can do all those things. And even those little stands, it really feels so real, doesn't it? It is really amazing. When you go inside, you feel like you're really walking into this amazing building. Yes. It is uh, really they, They've done an amazing job on it. Yes. Think. So impressive how they did the platform. So I was really excited when this opportunity opened up. I'm like, yes, I want to be there and experience that. Because it was <laughs> so, so amazing. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, maybe I just tell the people um, where they can find me yeah. in the last minute. So you can find me under my name that you see here, Barbara Ulmer. You, you, will, feel, you will see my business and it's BU Language and Learning Center. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. So um, it is easy to find me and reach out to me and have a look at all the opportunities and programs that I offer. And it was such an amazing opportunity to speak here today, internationally, globally, on the screen, trying to teach you a bit of French, a bit of German, and also give you a bit of an insight.